much for attending. This is our Clovis Chamber of Commerce, our Wake Up Clovis program. And uh, we're just very happy to have you here. Uh, first, I want to thank you. Uh, our sponsors always thank our sponsors. So Clovis Community College. I see Dr. Bennett is joining us. Thank you, Lori. Uh, the city of Clovis and then Guardian County. So they're the ones that kind of help uh, keep this going for us. So we thank them. And, you know, kind of without further to do, we have some very special guest speakers with us tonight. And I've been, you know, a very small part of the Rodeo Association for, you know, years. I kind of hang around and try to help where I can and whatnot. And I just, when I first started, um, you know, was just amazed at the kind of the passion of, of the folks who put on the rodeo, the directors, um, it's all volunteer based. Um, and it's just kind of goes to the heart of our community and, and why we do things like this in Clovis and, and what it means to the Clovis um, way of life. So I wanted to bring them on and I'll, let me, I'll just do a quick introduction for both of you guys. And then you can kind of, um, uh, Ron, we'll start with you, kind of tell us um, about how you started in, in the Clovis Rodeo and how you got involved. So uh, quick introductions. We have Ron Dunbar, and Ron is the president of the Clovis Rodeo Association this year. Is that correct, Ron? Yes, sir. Okay. Thank you. And then we have Vince Janko, and Vince is the head of everything else. Or well, the, yeah, the arena director and the head of the sponsor committee. So yeah. I guess <laughs> so Ron, let's start with you, and then we'll go to Vince. Can kind of introduce yourself and let us. How did you get involved with the Clovis Rodeo? Well, I. Uh, my family moved to Clovis when I was five years old. I was grammar schools every since then, but my dad was was involved. He um, he worked the east end of the arena, which wasn't the best place to watch the rodeo, but that's where all of us kids grew up. And we had you know families that we see twice a year, maybe at the most. But that's, I mean, that was a a childhood um, part of my childhood that I you know would never ever want to replace. I mean, um, great friends, great family. Um, so I, the story is my first rodeo, I was born December of 61. My first rodeo was April of uh, 62, 1962. So I haven't missed one. Um, got more involved as I got older and with, with Vince and Dan Riggs, but I got to hang out with them a little bit more and I stuck my way, worked my way up to the bucket shoes. Finally, Vince uh, gave me a job out front when I became a board of director. Um, but it's, it means a passion, man. It, it's like you said earlier, none of us get paid for what we do. I know Vince and I, and the whole board's got number number of hours in this thing. And we, we start meeting in May and June after the rodeo and start planning for the following rodeo. Um, but it's, you know, it's just not us. It's the the thousands or how many hundreds of volunteers that are, you don't even see half of them. And then and without them, we don't make this thing happen. So, I mean, that's how I got involved as a kid and, and um, I'm glad to be a part of it. Okay, uh, Vince, why don't you tell us how you got involved in the Clovis Rodeo? Well, I, I moved here in 1973 and uh, came to work for uh, for a really good friend of mine, Bill Verdugo, who had a ranch out east of Clovis. And and uh, I came for two months, and, and I, I guess I've been here almost 50 years now. So uh, anyway, it was uh, I got involved with the rodeo. Uh, one of the directors was a good friend of mine, Emmett Rigsby, who has two sons on the on the board with us now, Dan and Dan and Chuck Rigsby are, are directors with us. And um, and the Rigsby family kind of took us in because uh, my wife and I, we were we really didn't have a lot of friends here or anything else. And so they were kind of our first uh, our first introduction to Clovis and, and they, they've been lifelong friends. And, and uh, Mary Rigsby, who uh, Emmett's wife just turned 101 yesterday. And we had a little birthday party for her on Sunday. She's She's 101 years old, and God bless her. She's still doing pretty well. But anyway, um, I I started uh, helping in the arena by by we used to, instead of having all this electronics, uh, it was about 1974 or five, I guess I started and and uh, I I put the scores. I'd add the scores up from the judges, put them on a chalkboard, and flash them up to the announcer so that the announcer would know what the guys ride scored, you know, now everything's electronic. I mean, the minute the ride's over, the judges punch in the numbers and, and you know, the score, but I mean, that's just how things have changed. And, and of course, uh, uh, you know, I, I wasn't involved in, in this rodeo as long as Ronnie's been. Um, but I, I knew we had something very special. And then when I got on the board, um, I just, you know, 
I mean, my, my little speech to the new board members is always, is if you want to, if you want to produce a punk and rolling rodeo, what I call, you know, a little small rodeo like that. I said, you guys can do it yourself because I don't want to be involved. But I said, if you guys want this thing to progress and, and, and get bigger and, and grow, I said, I'm, I'm going to be right in there helping all of you. And, uh, and that's what we've done. We've gone from a two day rodeo to a five day now. And, uh, and I, I, we're pretty proud of that. And it was, it's a lot of hard work by a lot of people. Well, it certainly is. So before we move, you know, what's going to happen in the future, let's kind of go to the, let's go uh, back to the past. So I don't know which one of you guys wants to be the historian, but can you just give us a couple minutes on the history of the rodeo, kind of how it started here in Clovis and, um, and, and that sort of thing? I mean, I, I'll start and Vince could fill in a little bit if I miss something, but First rodeo, you know, first roast is uh, um, 1914. And I believe it was at Third Street and um, Clovis Avenue is where the original rodeo grounds was. And I believe, Vince can correct me, I believe 1936 or 37, we moved to the location we're at now. Is that correct, Vince? Is that roughly the time? About right, yeah. Yeah. And then I believe in the late, early, late 40s, early 50s, they built the concrete grandstands and and slowly put the arena together what it is now i mean it's 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 an old place that original where we're at now was the old um uh, mill for the uh clovis lumber company and they'd bring logs all the way down the uh help me out vince the uh, flume take the logs all the way from shaver all the way to the uh to our rotor grounds at that time and and um and we slow i mean we've grown a lot with help of vince and uh, vision and and now we've got you know class act um um arena with uh you know we we had to progress because that thing was slowly falling apart so we built the vip um tom's turns and then we built the centennial suites and now we're working on another one in the future but it's it's progressed to one of the best or one of the top rings in the country for darn sure okay yeah we're we are in the top 20 uh in the in the country and i guess it, by being in the top 20 in the country or top 20 in the world i i, I would think because you know, the rodeos in, in the United States, of course, are, are I, I do a little international traveling. I've been to rodeos in Brazil and, and Australia, and, and uh, there's nothing like our rodeos, you know, the, the big ones that we have here. So, I, you know, no matter where I go and watch a rodeo, I'm, I'm always pretty proud of Clovis because I think we've got a really good show that, that keeps moving. Um, when you talk about the history, I, I think you, you got to look at some of the the old families that were involved in the original, you know, in the old days. And, and uh, you know, a lot of them were the settlers, you know, the, the blasting games and the samples and, and the Simpsons. And, uh, and, and, and that's why we, for our hundredth year, we thought of, we put that bull of lane and uh, red rock and lane frost statue out front of the, of the uh, rodeo grounds. Um, that was part of our history in 1989, but around the base of that, if you ever get by the front of the rodeo grounds and stop and look, the whole history of the rodeo grounds is around that base. All the old families have their brands on there. There's a lot of our really good sponsors that have been with us for years on there. Uh, I, and it's just, it, 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 it's kind of something that we're really proud of because it, it kind of personifies what Clovis Rodeo is, is, is all about. Okay, well, thank you. So what's, you, you, we talked about it started as a two-day rodeo, and now uh, this year it's going to a five-day rodeo. So you know, what, can you just tell us a little bit about what uh, folks can expect this year um, at the Clovis Rodeo? Well, you know, we start off Wednesday night with our PBR, and, and, and last year we had 15 of the top 40 guys there, Vince, I believe. I mean, yeah. I mean, they were in the top five in the world were there. So we put up enough money um, to get those guys to come. Plus, being on Wednesday night, it get, allows them two days or a day to travel to the uh, next PBR event. But it's, I mean, we got the best guys in the world and, uh, and some really excellent bulls. Um, then after that, we got a concert. Uh, Mitchell Tenpenny would be playing right after the uh, PBR, and that's usually about 20 minutes after the time we get set up. And then I'll just run through the days. And Thursday, we start our full rodeo package um and then after that is parmalee is our concert and then april 22nd friday is jameson rogers after our full rodeo performance and then saturday we start off the parade downtown clovis 9 a.m 
Um, hopefully we'll get that back after being gone for a couple of years. We're excited to have that coming back. Um, our rodeo performance at 2 p.m. And then Sunday's our finals. And our special kids rodeo is at 11. I believe it starts at 11. That's, um, that's a pretty special event that we put on and, and uh, pretty heartbreaking. But these kids have nothing but trying them. And uh, they're, they're good kids. But it's it's a full full week. We start Monday, actually, with uh, breakaway rope. And, and Vince could talk about that. But it's a full week of, of – uh, by Monday morning, we about had it, to be honest with you. But <laughs> Yeah, like Ron said, on Monday, uh, we, we have a new event this year. It's called the Girls Breakaway Roping, and, and it's it's really getting popular across the whole United States. Um, and so we've gone ahead and, and added it this year to our rodeo. Um, we, we've added pretty good prize money, so hopefully we're going to get the – we're going to get a lot of the good girls out of, you know, from back in Texas and Oklahoma. Um but we have good we have good ropers out here in California too. Don't get me wrong. Um, the uh, the Saturday performance that we have uh, will include uh, a flyover by the 144th Fighter Wing. Uh, the the jet that's named after the city of Clovis will be in that in the, in that group, and then uh, that's our military appreciation day also. So we do a we do a big a, a big salute to the military that day and and first responders. Um, and, uh, I, I, you know, I think we're going to have, we, we bring seven stock contractors in. I was looking at the list yesterday. They come from as far away as Alberta, Canada, Wyoming, Montana, uh, Washington, state of Washington, and of course, state of California. And, and the reason we do this is, is there's just not, there's not a, a one stock contractor that has enough good animals to, to keep these guys happy to come and get on, you know, at a rodeo. And so what we do is we ask each one of those contractors to bring their best animals. And, and it really, you can see the difference. I mean, we've had, we've had some great, uh, great bucking horses there uh, the last five, six years. I mean, not that we didn't have any in the past, but we just seems like everyone looked good, better and better as they, they go along. So we, what we've kind of created this kind of pushed this thing to, to where we want to give the people such a good show that they want to come back either even that same year. Again, we have a lot of people who buy tickets on the way out sometimes if there's tickets available and, uh, and then, you know, they'll, they'll want to come back and for sure they want to come, you know, the next year. So uh, it's, a, we've kind of created uh, not only a rodeo, but kind of an event that people love to go to. Well, you, you mentioned the stock and and, and uh, where they're coming from. So, what is the importance to the Cowboys of having great animals to uh, to work with to ride uh, during a rodeo? Well, the the scoring is 50, 50 points for the cowboy and fifty points for the horse. And if you don't have a horse that the guy can can score forty on, you know, for the horse and forty on for himself, which is an eighty. You know, he knows he's not going to probably be in the money at Clovis. And so that's why we have to have good horses for these guys to want to come and get on. Um, and, and that's why it takes, you know, takes seven stock contractors to do to do our, uh, our rodeo. And, we, you know, we've, out, we've outgrown the pens at the rodeo. Uh, we have a really good friend of the Clovis Rodeo, Greg Harlan, Harlan Ranch. Uh, and, and Greg has a really nice set of corrals and load and shoot and everything just right out east of town right off of 168 so we put a lot of our bucking stock we have to put it out there at his ranch we put a few head at, at our ranch at you know on uh, locan and shepherd so we've got we've got horses and, and bulls kind of spread out all over clovis that weekend and and they you know they haul them in for the rodeo whatever ones are bucking that that day and, and there's some that stay at the grounds but we don't like to crowd them too much you know we we, we pride ourselves on taking really good care of our animals uh to the point where we give them shade we you know we, we wet the pens down if it's really hot uh you know and we just you know there, there's a the people that say that we mistreat uh our animals are completely wrong and it you know it's 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 just the the animal rights propaganda people and and we uh you know one year we had a uh, we had a, a big um demonstration out front this was a long time ago this was 20 years ago and so we invited those people in to come and look at the animals 
and and go through the stock trailers, the 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 trailers, and you know they said, oh, you put nails in the flank straps and this and that, and we said, come on, and we we came in there, we gave them a tour, and at the end of the tour, we asked them what they thought, and the biggest complaint they had was there was too many flies on the bulls, and that was the only complaint that they could come up with. So anyway, that kind of tell, and we have we thank God and knock on wood, we have not had a lot of problems with animal rights people in Clovis, just because we, you know, we've never fought them. We just said, Hey, come on in. We're, you know, we're transparent. Come look. Well, uh, yeah, I know Ron mentioned just briefly kind of the expansion. Um, I know a couple of years ago, I think it was 2018, you did the big or 17, you did the big uh, um, centennial plot or the, the, the new suites over the buck and shoots. 14. Uh, 14. It was 14 already. Oh my yeah. God. Yeah. A yeah. hundred um, year. hundred year. So what, um, what, what is moving all this expansion? Is it, you just have so many uh, sponsors that want to be a part of it that you need a, a place to put them all or what's driving the expansion and improvements uh, as regarding the seating and suites? Well, we, we've, we've been really blessed with good sponsors at Clovis. I mean, it, it's unbelievable. Once, once we got our story out there and, 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 you know, kudos to Alfreda Sebasto. She is the one that really got us to, to tell our story. Um, the, uh, you know, cowboys don't like to brag about what they do, but we needed to tell our story about what we do for the community of Clovis. And I think now uh, when we figured, the last time we figured it up between donations and, and in-kind uh, donations, we, we give almost 350000 a year back. To the community and that's you know all the concession people and that's everything but i mean it's it's a substantial figure and when you put that along with the impact of of, of a fiscal impact of 15 million on the on the community uh you know that that really tells you something about our event and when people see our event and they and they want to be involved with it uh you know i mean as as chairman of the sponsor committee I have a waiting list of almost 40 people to go up into a suite. And I mean, you know, we don't have any, we don't have any suites to give. Mm -hmm. Nobody gives them up once they get them, you know? So what do we have to do? We have to build new ones. And, and that's where Ronnie comes in. Cause that's his, that's his business. And uh, so we're looking at redoing the, the Tom Stearns completely and making it two stories and, and, uh, and making it like the, uh, the Centennial suites. And I think, uh, uh, you know, if we have a normal year like we've had in the past, last year was, of course, the COVID year and it was terrible. But if we have a normal year, which we have no restrictions this year, as far as COVID is concerned, uh, it's going to be a, a, a norm, quote unquote normal rodeo. So uh, we're, we're looking forward to a, a, a good crowd. We've, the ticket sales have been very good. And I think we're going to have we're going to have a lot of people. And if we can get that done, uh, we'll we'll start to look at, at building the, those other suites. The one quick question, Greg Vince mentioned the sponsors, and I don't remember what year it was. Um, Ram Rodeo is a major sponsor, and we had the Finnegans just came on board that year. It's probably been a few years. And Friday night is a Ram night. They uh, draw for a belt buckle, and the Finnegans get out of their truck. Friday night is just rocking. They're like no martyr. The place is packed, and people everywhere, and they go. Is it always like this? I go, yep. He goes, we're in. We're always in. So, I mean, and it's important. We produce our own rodeo. A lot of rodeos have their stock contract to do it, but we know our city. We know our fans. We know what people like, and that's the reason we take pride in producing our rodeo, which is reflected. There's no downtime. Once we buck that first horse, the last bulls out of the arena, there's no dead time. If there is something going on, J.J. Harrison, our clown during the rodeo, steps in and can keep things rolling. So that's important. You can't have people just sitting there and dead time, and you see that in a few. I go probably a few more rows than Vince does right nowadays, but you hate dead time, and we don't have any dead time just because of the amount and time we put in the, um, the performance. Sorry. No, it's sure entertaining. You know, I've been going for years, and it's you know I've watched it grow, and it is. I mean, once you sit down, you, you're you don't want to get up to go get another tri-tip sandwich, but you do anyway. You, know, you try to hit yeah. it. You try to hit it right between the things. But you, you talked about the community events and giving back to the community. Um, how many different nonprofit groups do you invite in to help with concessions or other parts of the rodeo um, that puts money in their pocket for their cause 
uh, by donating maybe their labor to help with the operations? Well, we don't let any commercial uh, people come in as far as food is concerned. Everything that we do at Clovis Rodeo is either we are, it's part of our deal, uh, like the, we do the tri-tip sandwiches uh, and, and some of the beer on the lawn there, but, but the other concessions are all uh, American Veterans, uh, Kiwanis Club, Boy Scouts, uh, those, those are the people that we want to help, you know, and, and they, uh, they will tell you, uh, any of those groups will tell you that we are their biggest fundraiser of the year. They make uh, the Boy Scouts, I know they, I, I forget the number, but I'm going to say they send around 40 kids to camp with the money that they make at, at the Clovis Rodeo. Uh, we used to have uh, the, the Clovis PD Explorer Scouts doing our parking for us. Well, they, I, I was talking to one of the uh, officers the other day and they, they completely disbanded that, uh, the, the Explorer Scouts. So we're trying to go to maybe to the sheriff's department. You know, Margaret Mims has been a great, uh, she's been a great friend of the Clovis Rodeo. And, uh, and so we're, we might go to, to the sheriff's department and see if we can get, get their cadets, you know, to kind of come out and help us with this. And we pay them, you know, it, it all, it's, we don't ask them to do it for free. We pay them to do it, but it, you know, it's a donation to their cause and, and, and we feel that it's, uh, you know, very well worth it. They do a great job. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I, you know, if you see them out there, you see the Boy Scouts, you see the folks working, and it's kind of kind of nice, especially from my perspective, since you know I'm around Clovis all day long, right? That's my job is to promote Clovis and all the great things that are happening here. But when you walk into the rodeo and you see all those familiar faces, all those folks that you know, you're doing business with on a day to day uh, basis, but you know you, you say hi to somebody who's serving beer, or they're, you're buying a hot dog from them. Um, you know, it, it, it does have that sense of community and that's still that kind of small town feel, um, which, which is really, really attractive. And I think people that come from out of town feel that. Um, so from out of town, let's talk about the impact on the community as far as tourism real quick. I know um, you're probably filling every hotel room in Clovis and probably Fresno also with mm -hmm. folks coming to the rodeo, but what is that draw? How, how, if you have any uh, data on how far people come uh, to visit Clovis for the rodeo? I, I mean, Vince, I, we, I think we tried to do that before, but I mean, they'll come as far as Bakersfield, um, as far north as, as Red Bluff, Reading. Um, so we, we do a good job promoting it and do up in social media, let people know come out because they know it's a top notch rodeo. You're going to, you go to Calgary Stampede, you go to San Antonio, but this rodeo is pretty impressive. And I think people are willing to travel that far to see a top-notch rodeo and have a good time. I mean, it's it's a good time for all the fans. Foods, we try to keep all the food reasonable, the drinks reasonable. So that's always been our goal, um, not to break a bank when Johnny and his wife bring their two kids. They come out with some money at the end of the day. But a lot of these events and some of these others, I mean, you come out, you spend 200 bucks and – hardly got anything for us. So that's one of our goal. And I think that's what brings uh, people to Clovis, plus that hometown, old town uh, feeling when you get to Clovis. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people say, you know, it's just like old home week. And, and you know, the, the last weekend of April, the last full weekend of April, they, they just plan on being here. And, and a lot of them are co come back. You know, there's a lot of people come back. At, you know, this year we've got two great people for our grand marshal. We got two ex-directors. Uh, that were very active uh, when I first got on the board, um, and you know they're they're in their late seventies now, and and uh, but it's Larry Parker and and Brian Avery, and and Brian was the one. A lot of people don't know it, but Brian is the one that was re responsible for getting the the rodeo hall built that we use now. You know for so many for so many functions, and you know and he had the foresight to see that something like that was needed. We were doing everything over in the, in the Memorial building and we had nothing on grounds. And now we use, I mean, we really use that thing. We overuse it. I mean, really. <laughs> and, and, and the community, one of the nice things about it, uh, when, when we do lose a member of our rodeo family, we're, you know, we, we, we take care of them. And, and if they want to have the service at our building, you know, we, we just give that to the family because we, we, you know, we know those people, most of them, that, that that they have the, the memorial services for 
you know, they've all put their time in at the Clovis Rodeo and, and, and that's just a, a small way to repay their, you know, their, their support for all those years. And when you talk about volunteers working in the tri-tip booth, I, I bet we're the only rodeo anywhere that has, we had our mayor, Harry Armstrong, working in the tri-tip booth for I don't know how many years. He was a, he was a real stalwart there, you know, and, and he, Harry was a great friend, really supported the rodeo. And one year he brought the, the whole uh, uh, League of Cities. He was president of the League of Cities. I think he brought 50 mayors to the Clovis Rodeo one year and showed off the rodeo. And he was so proud of us after when we were done, he got so many compliments, you know, and, and, and that's, you know, that's Clovis, it, it's our identity. You know, the Clovis Rodeo is our identity. And Vin, Vince mentioned the city. We're, we're very, very fortunate that the city of Clovis, everybody involved is very helpful for what we do. We want to build something. It's not, well, you got to do that. You can't do this. You can't do this. So it's, how can we help you? How can we make this work for you and get together? We had a meeting uh, a couple months ago or three months ago, try to get site plan review due, which we normally don't do. I mean, I build stuff, but I don't do that kind of stuff. But they held our hand all the way through. You won't have any problems anymore. Um, it's just awesome. Anything we do with the city is, is how can we help you? Other rodeos, it's it's a battle. I mean, it is a battle uh, from the get-go. And everything... We lost him. Worry about city of Clovis and uh, the county is not one thing we have to worry about. Well, that, that's a good point, uh, Ron. I know a couple years ago, or actually it was last year when we were both uh, trying to, I was trying to put on big hat days after a year off and you were trying to put on the rodeo. And um, I, I, I remember, you know, you guys working with the uh, Fresno Health Department supervisor, Mag Zig really stepped in to, to try to help get this thing going. He helped us here at the Clovis Chamber with Big Hat Days, and you know because he's a Clovis guy, he was on our council. He understands uh, what these two events really mean to our community, and it, it's great to have partners in local government that are that under just really understand the value of of community pride and and putting these types of events on. Yeah, we're in. I mean, last year brought that. That was a challenge. I mean, nobody's ever been through that, and Vince and I kind of navigated our way through the through the board of you know what we had to do and at the end of the day but um we made it i mean vince just I mentioned earlier always last weekend of april we thought about maybe moving it to maybe move back maybe we get some more um opening up but at the end of the day that's who we are last weekend of april and we stuck to our guns and i'm glad we did yeah yeah absolutely um you, you talked vince you talked about the rodeo and, and what it means to our community but in in how we're attract you're attracting cowboys and stock from all over the United States. Where does the Clovis Rodeo sit in your um, opinion in all the rodeos in the United States? I know, I know you mentioned it's a top five rodeo. Um, is that is that uh, because of our reputation, or is that the prize money that you guys are putting on the line, or how does how does that work? Yeah, I I, I think I think I said top fifteen, yeah. not top five. Well, I'm, I'm from the chamber. We round up, so we go. Oh, there you go. There <laughs> I gotta, I'll learn. I'm learning. I'm learning. Don't worry. Uh, no, seriously. Uh, um, we are number two in California. Uh, Salinas is the only rodeo that's ahead of us, and and we're going after them pretty hard. We're we're we're, we're going for number one, in, uh in California, um, I mean you've got you've got the Houston's and the San Antonios and the and the and you know the Denver's and Fort Worth. Those are all the the big indoor rodeos at the, in the beginning of the year. But the spring run in, in California is still um, it's still very important to the Cowboys, and it's it, you know we we get uh, they start with Logandale in Nevada, then then when they go to Oakdale and they go to uh, Red Bluff, they come to us and then they go to Redding, and so there's a big run that they're out here for about a month, you know, uh, and so it it, it uh, you know we. We've had, you know, a lot of international uh, publicity. Also, uh, we've had German. We've, we've actually had German people here uh, <laughs> from Germany that have come and, and and stayed with us, and 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 we, you know, hosted them. Um, so it, it's it, you know, from the rodeo standpoint, we're very well respected as far as the the professional rodeo cowboys association is concerned. It's especially last year, Greg, the Cowboys were so appreciative. We we kept our added money the same, and they hadn't worked really in a year and a half, and they were 
appreciative of what we did. And I mean, they came up to me, I'm sure they came up to Vince and they, they know what our crowd's like. And they saw it not very good. And, and Casey Field and Tilton Hooper, Hopper, Hooper, you know, thank you for what you did. We know it's not good, but we really appreciate you keeping us going down the road. So, and that, that'll pay back in dividends. I guarantee it'll pay back. So. Well, let, let's talk about the Cowboys real quick. Cause I, th this is what a lot of people don't know. So can you kind of walk us through the week of a Cowboy and this, you know, of, you know, why is he coming in the Clovis? What happens when he gets here? Um, you know, does he, how many events does he have to, you know, what does he have to do to win some money at the end of the, at, on Sunday? Um, and, and when does he go home? Well, well, you know, we'll have, we'll have most of the top 15 Cowboys going down the road. We'll have them here at Clovis. Cause we, we had 25,000 in an event. Um, our total prize money this year will probably be a little bit north of 450,000. See, I'm rounding up. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> but, but, you know, with, with all of the events that we do, the, the PBR and all our PRCA events, uh, we have the gold card roping for the, for the, uh, 50 and older group. And then, uh, now we, we've added the, we've added the girls breakaway roping, um, so they they'll get you know the 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 timed event cowboys will start getting here on Sunday. They'll come right from Red Bluff, and they'll start showing up here Sunday afternoon, Sunday evening, um, and then the girls will all show up on Monday morning to to rope, and then on Tuesday and Wednesday morning we have what we call slack, which is like an elimination. You you run one head on Tuesday and one head on Wednesday, and this is the the tie down roping, the steer wrestling, and the team roping. And then the top, the top guys from the from those uh, two days come back to the performance uh, on Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. And then the top guys from the performances go into the finals on Sunday. So you have a you have you can they can actually run four head here, um, and 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 then we pay an average, uh, we pay a you know, uh, the, for every go round and so on. So the money split up pretty good. Uh, but still they'll make a pretty good check at the end of the day. And then the, the, the rough stock guys are all, uh, they just come for a one header. It's just a straight one header and whatever day they're up, they're up. And that's, you know, we have four performances. We have 60 in each performance, no slack. And, uh, and when, you know, when they leave here, they could be eight to $10,000 richer. So I, oh, go ahead, Ron. Okay. Well, I, I kind of call Clovis the mothership of Clovis that weekend. Mother, mothership of rodeo because they can go to Auburn, Springville and Lakeside that same way they hit those rodeos. So they'll, the time to event guys are probably going up and down the road and um, hitting one rodeo, hitting this hitting that. And the time to earn the rough talk guys as well. They may, be entered in Clovis on Friday, Springville on Saturday, Lakeside on Sunday, but that way they could hit a few rodeos on that same weekend, which makes it worthwhile for them. So we provide the big rodeo and then they, they do what they can at the other rodeos. When they, so if, if, if I'm a, let's say I'm a bull rider, right? Which clearly I'm not. And I want to, do I have to be sanctioned? Do I have to be licensed? Do I have to be approved somehow in order to apply to ride at your rodeo? Yeah, you have to have a card. They, they, they have a card. They're a okay. member and they have to buy their card. They have to earn their card as a rookie. Okay. They have to go to, they, they buy a card and then they have to go to so many rodeos and to fill that card to get a permanent card, they need to, I think they have to win $2,500. And then once they fill their card, then they can, then they can rodeo anywhere they want to, but that's called a permit. And, and when they have their permit, some rodeo, we don't, we don't have a lot of permits at Clovis because we're such a big rodeo, but some of the smaller rodeos like Springville and, and Auburn and Lakeside, they'll have permits. They'll take permits to keep the numbers of their contestants up. We don't have a problem with contestants. We, we probably will have uh, uh, 500 PRCA contestants. We limit it. Uh, if, if we didn't limit it, we probably have almost 700, you know, but, but by limiting it, you get the, you get the best, you get the best cowboys. Uh, they have to qualify to come to Clovis. Uh, and then the PBR, we take 40 people in the PBR, um, you know, so yeah, we'll, we'll have, we'll still have close to 600 contestants here for the, you know, for the week. 
And so based on, you know, you've been around for so long now, you're able to kind of pick, not pick and choose, but you get the cream of the crop uh, just because of the prize money. And so you're the, you're the major leagues and some of the smaller rodeos are like the farm system. You know, they got to work their way through the, the minor leagues to get to, uh, to you guys. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. It sounds like a, it sounds like quite a journey. So you, you have relationships with these Cowboys, you know, You've talked to the rookies and in, in the in the grizzly old uh, veterans. What what goes through their mind, especially the bull riders and the and the bear the bareback riders? You know, is it the passion? Are they doing it for money? Are they doing it just because it looks fun? Or you know what? Because I think they're just nuts. <laughs> I think I, I, I part of it's the passion and part of it's the adrenaline. Them bull riders are adrenaline junkies. I mean, I'm back. I'm from the shoots or go back behind, and they're just. They're a little different breed. They're pretty quiet to themselves for the most part. Bareback riders are kind of talkative and bronc riders too, but bull riders kind of keep themselves a little bit. And um, when they're back there getting getting ready to get on the bull, I'm sitting there right, standing right in front. It's, it's, I mean, it's kind of – I get a little adrenaline watching them get ready, you know, and the real, especially the real good guys, they got their routine. They know what they're doing. Um, but it's got to be adrenaline. And I asked one of them, I mean, are you scared? He goes, of course I'm scared. I'm, I'm not crazy. But it's the adrenaline and, um, I don't know, the, the sport is what they really enjoy. I mean, they grew up, we have a little kid, not a little kid, he's in the, one of the top rock riders in the country. He started mutton busting at Clovis Rodeo. His name was Lefty Holman, and I talked to Lefty over the weekend. But I mean, that's how we got to start. Um, but I think it back to that, it's mostly adrenaline, I think. I mean, the love of riding bucking horses and bulls. and, and I mean, a lot of them are race motorcycles, a lot of them are wrestlers. I mean, but that's, that's, that's your extreme sport. How's that? Yeah. Well, at one time i heard the figure that that there's probably 10 percent of those guys will pay their way down the road the other 10 are cost it costs them money i mean the other 90 percent it ends up costing them money to rodeo but they it's just a way of life for these guys um you know and, and then like a lot of them had to you know during the COVID thing where there was no rodeos for a year and a half they you know they had to go out and find jobs well a lot of them do have jobs you know it's not like the old days were where these guys were all ranch cowboys and on weekends they rodeo these guys you know they were they rodeo 365 they they're they're going year round but uh you know it just um they it just you, you got to have a certain mindset to want to be a rodeo cowboy you really do now you, you talked about you know they have to pay it their own way so they do they pay a fee to enter the uh, clovis rodeo yes Okay. Yeah. Um, and, and I mean, it, and, and like in the time events, it, it might be, uh, it might be $400 uh, uh, entry fees, you know, for those, for those guys in the, like in the team roping and the, and the steer wrestling, uh, the, the, the rough stock aren't quite as high. Uh, but the, you know, the time event, the time eventers, they like to make it a more or less of a, a deal where they're, they're going for a lot more money. So they're betting on themselves. They're uh, they're saying, okay, I'm going to go down to Clovis. I'm going to pay for my gas, my lodging, my food, the entry fee, and they get one crack at it. If they don't make it, they're going home. Right. Well, well they put, go to the next yeah. rodeo. <laughs> Although you know there might be four or five bull riders jumping out of a truck, and whoever won that day, that's their that's their money to keep on going down the road, kind of like uh, the. Um, movie with lane frost that was kind of how whoever won that day they kept them going down the road and i mean obviously the guys were top tier rodeo cowboys but i mean they're uh they're a good group of guys i mean 99 percent all root for each other i mean i know they want to win but you know the right boys and all they just they they're a good group of guys you know and they were rooting for cheering for each sour uh, the steer wrestler down at the other end i mean they're clapping like crazy if somebody turns a steer half a second fast they're gonna be out of the money that's okay they're they're happy for that person so they're not too many. There's a few, but um, prima donnas. But for the most part, it's a team group that root for each other. Well, I know you know just from going to the rodeo, and I've seen you guys. You know, there you guys are just busy from from uh, sun up to sun down on rodeo day. Uh, Vince, I'll start with you. Can you kind of just walk us through your day and your responsibilities on a on a rodeo? Uh, let's call it rodeo Saturday. What what are you doing? Well, like, like a, during the week, uh, earlier in the week than Saturday, uh, Saturday is kind of, we are kind of over the hump by Saturday. We have no more slack. We have no more, uh, we, we just have the parade and the rodeo that day and the dance that night. And, um, but 
earlier in the week, those, those days get really long because a lot of times Alfredo will have, uh, she'll have TV set up for starting around five in the morning. And so we're there at five and, and, uh, and, and in the arena, you know, and they, and they'll want our specialty act to do a little something for them and they'll want people. So we, I mean, we get our, we get our specialty act and our rodeo clown there, you know, and, and, and a lot of times our stock contractors will get them there for interviews. So people, they can, they can get on the early shows for the TV. And then of course, on, we have slack all day on like, say on, a, on Wednesday, we have slack till one o'clock in the afternoon. Then we got to get the arena ready for the bull ride. We got to make sure all the bulls get through the, get through the shoots so that they know where, how to get out of the arena because it, there's nothing more distracting than having to have those guys rope those bulls and drag them out of the arena. You know, we like them to go out by themselves and it, it just makes it things go quicker and, and everything else. So, so we kind of train the bulls a little bit that afternoon. And then we, we, we have to change our signage a little bit for the PBR and in the arena. And then right around six o'clock we start, you know, and we, we have to get everything organized for the grand opening and the fireworks and the, all that stuff. And, and then it's a late day. And by the end, you usually, I usually get home and Ronnie's the same way. I know we, we usually get home about midnight and then we, sometimes we got to be up at five the next morning, you know? Okay. Ron, you're, you're right there on the bucket, uh, on the shoots. What do you, what's your role uh, during a rodeo um, in, in working with the animals and the cowboys? Well, we, um, you know, say a Friday, I, I, um, make sure our special act he's ready it's, it's this year's thomas tomas garcilano um or Charles, really famous Charles. he won the big show they have on i can't remember what channel that was but anyway make sure the bullfires there make sure everybody knows what time they got to be there um we have a production meeting normally two hours before the event and we go down and vince leads that we go down item by item and make sure we're all set timing flag girls um when the sponsorship comes out um sponsor flags it's 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 there's a lot going on and um, that production meeting is very helpful to all of us. And then, then we get the our day sheets and who's bucking that day. If there's any turnouts, and then before the rodeo starts, I'm back behind the shoots and just moving around. Then all of a sudden we start loading animals, and I got two guys in the back help me. Where Greg Newman's here, Vince is here, Ronnie's here. It's like we kind of line them up that way. And then I got a microphone like the good old now like trying days. I'm talking to the. Um, scoreboard guys who relate to the announcer who's who's on deck and we just keep rolling the animals the best we can the fast we can to keep things rolling so that's my job to keep things rolling on if I don't do very good I look down at the end of the buck and shoots and there's Mr. Janko looking at me wondering what's going on Ron but and it's important I mean it, it's important to all of us keep things rolling but that's I mean at the end of the day you know I'll buck bareback horses do the Bronx and the bulls at the at the very end but it's exhausting how much you've got a concert that night and uh we'll go hang out at one end and talk about how good we did that day. And, <laughs> and then and by Sunday night, you're dragging, but it's, it's worth it. If we could fill this place like we normally have, and I think we will, that's the, that's my satisfaction. I'm sure everybody else when that place is packed and rocking, we've done our job. Yeah. And that's important to us is that we've done our job. Absolutely. So I do have a couple questions from some uh, folks in the audience. So uh, one is, do you have a plan for a ceremony to honor the grand marshals that the community can attend? We we have a, not really, we have a, um, mostly they're private events. It's at, um, at the catering on Tuesday night. And then we do, well, then come to the Queens uh, reception and that, that they get attend that. That's on uh, the Saturday before. Okay, and I guess you could always go to the parade because we'll be in the right parade. parade. They'll be in the parade. Yeah, good point, Greg. Yeah. And, uh, what yep. what day of the rodeo do the grand marshals come out and wave? Every, every day. Every day. Okay. Every day. Yeah, they sit in their box right across the main box, right across from the arena, or unless they want to come out and stand whatever they want to do. But that's when we announce during the opening ceremonies when we uh, we announce our grand marshals. Okay, so they're not they're not hiding them. They're uh, they're they're going to be everywhere. no. They're there. They'll be out and about. Yeah. Okay. Uh, another question, where does the money come from for the prizes? Does it come from sponsors or those attending um, the rodeo? Uh, it, it, well, it comes from attending, it comes from sponsors, and it also comes from the Cowboys. Their, their entry fees go into the pot, but we have what, what you call added money, and our added money is 25000 an event. Um, and so that, that puts us up in kind of an elite 
kind of the the top end of the, of the deal. I think there's only 30 rodeos maybe in the whole country that add 25,000 or more. Wow. So, um, yeah, that's, that's where the money comes from. Okay. And that's why we're able, I mean, with, with the sponsors that we have, that's why, and the crowds that we get, that's why we're able to, to do what we're doing. And it all works together because as you, if you keep the good Cowboys coming, they put on a great show. The people want to come back. If we got the people in the stands, the sponsors want to be involved, you know, and, uh, I, the the one year the year um, Massey or yeah Massey Ferguson gave away a tractor uh, I think it was in 2015 maybe or right around there and mm -hmm. uh, so so we had Alfreda write up a, a little deal about Clovis Rodeo and what we do for the community and we won the tractor the first year and it, it's about a sixty five thousand dollar tractor I mean it's a, it's a nice it's one it's a big one <laughs> yeah it's a big one and. Uh, and, and I'll never forget, we have a sponsor appreciation. Well, Greg, you've been there, our sponsor appreciation deal in January where we get, we kind of get people thinking about rodeo early in January and, you know, let them know kind of what's coming up and how we're doing. And, uh, and I'll never forget, the, I, I was standing by the tractor and this guy, one of our good sponsors and his wife came up and looked at the tractor and we had a little story there about why we won it. And, and he tells his wife, he says, honey, he says, this is why we're involved with this organization. And that made me feel so good, you know, because here's a guy that, that really supports us and, and he's proud that he's supporting us because of what we do for the community. Yeah. Well, we're, um, you know, that's right. That, that's exactly right. And how you uh, work with the community. Now, there's been some uh, traditional events with the Clovis Rodeo. I'm just going to talk about a couple of them. You can let me know if they're, st if, if they're coming back or not. Uh, the, the Rodeo Blood Drive, are you doing that again? Yes, that'll be uh, Monday and Tuesday of the week of Rodeo. So okay. we're doing two days of the Blood Drive. Okay, and then you're bringing back Mutton Bustin'? Mutton Bustin' will be back. One of the favorites. Okay. Events for darn sure. Yep. Yeah, every night we have that. Even we have that for the PBR. We, we do a PBR night, too. So we'll have five five nights of five performances of mutton busting. Okay, well, my, my kids are too old to do it now. But what? Okay, what is the process? Let's say I got little Johnny. He's six years old and he's he's ready to go ride his first sheep. What is the process for a parent to uh, apply to uh, to be a mutton buster during the rodeo? Well, you got to, the applications around now, they're due pretty quick here. You can come to Clovis Road, the ticket office from 92 to pick it up. Susano's there on Pulaski and Longhorn Feed out there on Academy. They have applications and they they close fairly quick. So it'd be a good idea if they're five to seven, under 60 pounds is uh, is requirements. Okay. Okay. And it's a lot of, it's a lot of fun for them. Give me your best mutton busting story. Is there one that just stands out from all your years that, man, that was awesome? Probably uh, Lefty, Lefty yeah. Holman, I think. <laughs> when he was talking about Lefty Holman, when he when he started, uh, and he's from a famous family, famous uh, bronc riding family, the Marbles, and they're out of Battle Mountain, Nevada. And these, you know, the, the, the Joe Marble was a world champion. A lot of them rode rode saddle broncs. So his family has very got long long history with rodeo, and uh, and Lefty had been to a few mutton busting before he came to Clovis, um, and so the the everybody was there and they were putting them down on the sheep and they said okay get ready they said we're, we're going to open the gate and he turned around and he looked right i think it was mike spears he looked right at mike spears and he says i'll tell you when to open the gate <laughs> <laughs> and he, he rode all the way down at the west end of the arena they had to pull him off that view everybody cracked up when that kid told him told mike that he said i'll tell you when to open the gate <laughs> all right my mine that's one of my favorite the other one is one year this little boy didn't want to ride and we had the helmet on and he's getting teared up you know i'm back there and uh you want to ride no 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 you sure and we're not gonna afford that'd be that so all of a sudden his dad starts chewing on one of the directors i go what's wrong well you gotta make him tough he's gonna be tough i said no problem come back behind the bucket shoots how come you're riding the bull tonight what do you mean no you're gonna ride the bull tonight not what's well, gonna make you tough come on he goes i get it and i said yeah you do get it well anyway but yeah, these kids, I mean, you, we try to move them on pretty quick, so they don't really know what's happening, sort of. I mean, it just moves so quick, but most of them jump up with a smile. Few are very crying, but you know, they they you know, they may last two seconds, fifteen seconds, it doesn't matter. And, and Dan Adams are um, used to be CEO of Channel thirty, now lives in St. Louis, but he comes back this year to judge and first year judge, how do you score him? I said, 
if she's a cute little girl and she has a pretty smile, give her a It doesn't matter, Dan. He goes, okay, I got it. No. <laughs> but he enjoyed doing it. That's another guy that comes back every year. Didn't come back last year, but lives in St. Louis, Missouri, and wants to come back and be part of this event. Yeah. Well, I, I, I'll give you one more really great story. I just thought of it. Our, our, our president one year was Mark Thompson, who does a lot of our counseling <laughs> also. And, uh, and he was talking, it was after it was all over and he was talking, he had the microphone down in the arena and he's talking about all everything about the mutton busting and all that. And these guys let it, the extra, we had a couple extra sheep and they let her go. That was me. <laughs> oh yeah. Ronnie let her, he let the sheep go. She ran, the sheep ran the whole length of those panels. And at the end of the panels, the sheep have a, they have a habit of jumping. And this, this sheep jumped like a rocket and hit Mark right under the arm and knocked him down, knocked the air out of him. He never let go of the microphone. I was proud of him. He's laying in the dirt with the microphone, but he couldn't talk because he had all the air knocked out of him. Broke two ribs and everything. So we, we renamed that sheep uh, John Wilkes Booth because he tried to assassinate the president. <laughs> And I was the vice president, so they're blaming me because I, I'm the one that said it was clear to go. And I looked down that alley about the time I looked at, oh, my God, I think this is going to be bad. And it was. <laughs> he lived. Well, you guys have been fantastic. We're, our time is, is up, and we're just you know thrilled to have Rodeo coming back you know full force again uh, in our community. And, and you're right. It is the, uh, it is the uh, catalyst of our community. You know, when we – Talk about big hat days. We say, you know, that starts rodeo month, you know, so you get the month of uh, April and, um, you know, we're thrilled of all the, the people that come and visit our community to attend the rodeo and to attend, attend our events here in Clovis. And they get to, you know, eat at our restaurants and they fill up their gas at our gas stations and they shop at our stores. And that certainly helps all of our business. And, and um, you know, we're just proud to have the Clovis Rodeo here. So Ron, Vince, thank you very much for your time today. And we look forward to seeing you the last weekend in April. Yep, we're we're get ready to get back to normal, and yep. this will be normal. Or no, no, like I said, no restrictions. It's going to be a great show. We're trying to get the word out, so uh, people have been slow a little bit, and by now tickets have been moving well, just like Vince said. So we're ready. Springtime is going to be awesome. Good. All right, guys. Thank you very much, and thanks for being our guest today. Right. Thank, Thank you. you, Greg. Thanks for having us. Okay, you bet. Take care. All right. Bye. 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 Bye.